theme, shall we? But let's go to the other side of the world. Uh, Thomas Tai is the president of Direct Relief and is joining me now from the US state of California. Now, what expertise can you offer to this situation? Well, Direct Relief focuses a little bit more narrowly on the health and medical uh, needs. So we um, have initially already provided a couple of hundred, two hundred thousand dollars in financial assistance to Akut, the Turkish search and rescue group that we've worked with for the last three years. I think they're a fine local organization, as well as the Syrian American Medical Society, another group that we've worked with in uh, northwest Syria um, over the past several years. So. I think we're looking at this. Obviously, your, the images you're showing do a better job than any words can, just the scale of devastation. And from a health and medical perspective, obviously, the search and rescue takes priority. But beyond that, you have an immediate um, increase of demand for health services because of the injured people. At the same time, you have an immediate diminution of available health services because of all the infrastructure that's been uh, destroyed. So. I think we have substantial medical inventories both in the U.S. and Europe. They've all been made available to the Turkish authorities as well as the groups that we've worked with and are approved by the Turkish government. And are you know we don't want to get in the way. I think it's important to just not flood in things that aren't needed because that can clog up the distribution. But right now, it's clearly the priority of search and rescue teams that have descended upon Turkey from throughout Europe and the world. And we're a little bit in the background with financial support initially and then mobilizing the medical essentials that range from antibiotics to critical care medications, uh, obviously the wound and uh, dressings and uh, emergency medical packs that can be deployed to the people out in the field. And that, that we do all the time in about 100 countries a year. It's just heartbreaking to see so it. You're, I think, as I Go you've ahead. got that logistical expertise. I mean, as you anticipate the need to put that into... Uh, a front footing in the coming days. Uh, just to explain to us the challenges you might face. I think it's really the logistics. I think they're changing every day. The airports are open, the roads are icy. So I think we're aware of that. We've been tracking that since it's happened. But we do have material in Europe and here that's been requested. So we're already fulfilling uh, an initial order of about 25 pallets of specialized medical gear for people out in the field. But we're really looking carefully at what the hospital uh, supplies may need because we're in a position to help that uh, backstop those supplies. Clearly, they're going to be needed. And, you know, most recently, just in uh, northwest Syria, we were last month providing substantial quantities of support for the cholera treatment centers because that's endemic in the area and that's likely to, uh, you know, rise again just given the circumstances. When you say specialist gear, what what is the sort of things you can bring to this effort of helping Turkey and helping northern Syria, which might not be available locally? Well, I think a lot of it may be available locally, but it'll be maxed out. So we're backstopping. We don't want to get in the way. We have developed, I think, a specialized medical kit that's been approved by teams all around the world that contains gear for kind of an advanced first aid kit, basically, um, a field medic backpack that's deployable, contains about 100 items from pulse oximeters to wound dressings and disinfectants. Um, that can stabilize a patient before they can be transported, as your images are showing now. So I think you have uh, Akut has 650 or so volunteers doing the search and rescue right now through the rubble. And uh, but I think the other reports are just the, the rising number of inpatients, which can exhaust the supplies that people didn't plan for. So I think these situations tend to create um, some shortages, not immediately, but. Um, making sure we're, we're working at the guidance of the Turkish authorities, bringing in what they say are, are, is needed. And, you know, when you're dealing with prescription drugs, it's heavily regulated. So we're, we do it all around the world and are, do it with great care. So I think the supplies are available. It's just getting them to the right places in the right conditions. Um, and that takes information to drive that, which we're doing the best we can to stay on top of. But we have a team in Europe, our directors in Macedonia, which is uh, kind of in the neighborhood, so I think we've got pretty good flow of information, but it's still very spotty and very early. Thomas, Ty, thank you very much indeed. President of D Direct Relief and from California, we thank you for joining our program here on TV.